In this video, we are going to insert instances in non-planar surface using the drop method. First, we must draw a projection of the roof and insert the instances in it. We can use parallel projection and transparent material to draw some details. With the parallel projection mode, the model can disappear. This problem is called camera clipping. Returning to the perspective view, the problem disappears. To use the drop button, it is necessary to delete or hide the face. After that, we must select instances and click drop. The first option drops the instances until their origins touch an object. The orientation of the instances doesn't change. Now let's try the X rotation option. In this case, the instances rotate to fit their X axis to the surface. With the Y rotation option, the instances rotate to fit their Y axis to the surface. The last option rotates the instances to fit their collecting surface to the mesh. So, for this example, we should use the X rotation option. If we insert components using the portrait mode, the axis of instances will rotate. So, here we must use the Y rotation option. Let's try to select the group. It doesn't work, because we must choose instances. Now we have a problem. that The instances are not rotated, only dropped. This problem appears because we forgot to delete the face. We must delete it and drop the instances again. Now everything is ok. Let's delete all the faces to avoid repeating the error. Here we want to insert the instances coplanar. We can use Y rotation or coplanar options. In the last example, only coplanar rotation is possible. Now we are going to use Drop in a Google Earth Mesh. The first step is to delete or hide the face. After that, we select all the components and drop with the X rotation. Now the components are in the Google Earth terrain layer. This tool is used to compute a plane that is a best fit to a mesh. The projections plugin projects borders over a plane. Now, we try to make an offset, but this tool is not working as we want. So we use the scale tool instead. We press CTRL to center it while scaling. Now we are ready to project the face to the mesh. And now we have a face in which we can insert instances. 
using multiple faces or one face, one edge dialogues. If we know the coordinates of a point, we can set that point at the origin and afterwards geolocate the model. Using View Model Info Geolocation. If we have the UTM coordinates, we can use this tool which does the same as the other one. We can see the effect of the geolocation window. To make a report, it is necessary to add some construction points to the component in the x-axis. Before using the tool, we must select an edge of the component. We can see the information for the two construction points in each instance. The orientation of the selected edge. The position of the construction point. The position of the projection of the construction point over the mesh following the edge. And the distance between the construction point and the projection. We can export a model to PVSYST. The component must be a rectangle, because PVSYST can only handle rectangles. We can use a texture to represent the panels inside a table. We can export any object of the model, but PVSYST does not use them, so it's better to hide them before creating the file. Now everything is ready to create the file. PVSYST uses the margin values. It seems that the other values are not used by PVSYST. You can edit the H2P file with any text editor. Between DGM and END you will have a bunch of numbers if you didn't hide the objects in the model. In PVSYST we go to Near Shadings. File Import Helios 3D. And now we have all the tables. We must check the margins and the number of panels. Thank you for watching.